so Stephen Curry, he's like, um, goes to an estate sale near the beginning of the movie, and he's like, you know, just looking to pick up some shoes that were there. But then he realizes that every estate sale, they automatically just take the shoes to the thrift store or something. So then, like, he's like, oh my god, and he's like trying to sweet talk some woman who's like, you know, already like in her 60s or something, and he's like, oh, he's totally interested in her, you know. And then he like figures out what she did that day and where she took the shoes. Um, then he takes off to the thrift store where they were. So he gets to the thrift store, then there there's like some like Neanderthal, like, you know, crossed eyes, the like, like, one of those like teenage boys who's like growing infinitely about to die, you know, and has like random emotional fits. So then he like, you know, like, is like headed for the shoes, you know, and like a brisk walk, you know, as fast as you can go without like the retard employees like, you know, trying to stop him, you know, they're all like glancing at him. Then like the, the retards like also moving towards the shoes. So then like he like gets desperate and he looks around and he like grabs like, uh, He's like like a soccer ball, but then there's like a bowling ball instead, and he grabs that and like flings it because he's insane. Cause it's like below the level of the of the clothes shelves, so the employees can't see it from that angle because they like go down the length of the store. So he like bowls down the length of the store towards the guy, and then the guy like he's all like oh like supposedly going towards that. Then he like suddenly turns and like grabs like this ancient shitty VHS camera from the from the like late 80s, and he's all like oh. And like holds it up to the sky as the bowling ball like whizzes past the missing as like he wasn't going for the shoes at all you know but he was sure he was you know and he'll do anything for those shoes because they're like incredible shoes they're like they've got like special um like micro tacks in them for golfing you know those like rare golfing shoes I had a pair of those and they're hard to come by and uh, you need those for golfing man can't have a good time otherwise so the, the plot begins when he goes to the men's big and tall like I did when I was a teenager, you know. You get to age 14 and you go in, your feet are size 14, and you say, well, where's my shoes? And they say, oh, look at this. We got these narrow little Danish boats, you know, you can wear, you know, with like pointy toes on the front. And I'm like, oh, well, what if I have wide feet? And they're all like, you have... Extra large feet, but not like football player sized feet, not not linebacker. You got regular extra large feet, and they're wide. I, I, you better just kill yourself. There's like those have never been manufactured, and when they're manufactured, it's for like friends of the shoe companies, like cutting them a deal, you know. So then, like you have that scene when he's like a 14 year old, and he's all like, you know, whoever's playing the part, as then he just is all like shocked like his supposedly his world is rocked and like the colors change around him as he realizes he's never gonna have shoes in his life so then um we cut to years later and he's working at the men's big and tall store and he's infiltrated all the layers of trust and he's finally gained access to the computer where every person who ever came in and ever complained about how they wanted shoes in his size, like he goes through all the records because they keep them of every request, because supposedly you can send these requests to the shoe companies. And to his horror, he comes to realize that the shoe companies have been taking the requests from people with that size of foot and then because it's the exact foot size, as he learns from reading and doing this research, it's the exact foot size of elitist cunts who take HGH when they're 11 and live in big mansions on mountains overlooking every, all the peasants below them, supposedly, and eat like Twinkies along with their corn. And they grow to that exact size and shape of foot while it's all like gnarled and flat and like dead and gray. So then he realizes the conspiracy, as it's a top-down, like, the man is controlling the foot market, and uh, all the sexy feet athletes, you know, who are the top performers, like he is, is doomed. Because they're actually controlling the sports market through this method, he realizes. As then they're glorying and taking the suggestions of all of these people as he, as he hacks into the entire men's big and tall system worldwide, and realizes that... 
all the shoe manufacturers are the same old families in the same mansions overlooking people that are peasants in the valley and they're all just cutting deals for their own teenage sons to briefly manufacture a few pairs of shoes and then cut it all off again and uh... that's when he realizes that revenge is in order you know